Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to the next episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomachev, and I'm a Psycho Technology MVP. In this episode, I'd like to continue going down the system tree and take a look at Psycho Dictionary items. I'll take a look at what they are, how to use them, and one important thing you'd want to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and take a look. So Psychor provides a multilingual capability and that is supported through Psychor languages. Uh, now we already know how to enable multiple language versions for content, right? We'll simply create a new version for each language and through Psychor language detection, Psychor will automatically serve the appropriate version. Now, what about the miscellaneous text? Uh, text box labels, form labels, uh, miscellaneous text here and there that appears throughout the website. That's not really content, but it is part of the website. That also needs translation. And that's where dictionary comes in to help. So dictionary allows us to create these miscellaneous text definition strings, which can also be translated and interpreted uh, using Psycore language functionality. So the dictionary, the default dictionary, is located under six system dictionary. It allows us to create dictionary, uh, dictionary folders, dictionary entries. Uh, there are a couple of strategies that I've seen used with Psycore dictionaries. The first strategy is to group labels by Psycore content. Um, sort of mimic the cycle content structure under the dictionary and put the entries there. However, those might get very hard to find and it might be very hard to manage. So another way to, uh, perhaps a better way to manage dictionaries that I found, at least from my experience, is to create, create an alphabetized list of dictionary folders and then put the dictionary entries inside those folders starting with the letter of the folder. It makes it much easier to find, knowing the label, knowing the miscellaneous text you're looking for. It's very easy to find it in the alphabetized list. So let's go ahead and create one. So first, let's go ahead and create a dictionary folder. We'll call it folder A. And let's create a dictionary entry. Let's say about us. Now, what you'll do is you'll define the key for the dictionary entry, let's say it's about us label, All right? And then you define the actual phrase about us. Now, what is the key and what is the phrase? The key is used to reference the dictionary entry from your code. So in your code, in your views, in, uh, in your uh, views or sub layouts uh, or forms, you know, if you uh, still using webforms for marketers, you would reference this dictionary entry by using the Psycro Globalization namespace, and it would be Psycro Globalization that text translate that text, I believe, um, and then you pass it the key, uh, and that's how it's going to find this entry. Now, what it will do is, if it does find that uh, find that entry, it'll return the phrase for that key for the context language. Now this is very important to remember. So if we want to, let's say, translate about us into a different language, we simply create a new version in that language um, in Psycore, and Psycore will automatically, using the context of the website, the context of the request, therefore the context of, context of the language, will return the proper wording for that label. Now, so this is pretty straightforward. There's one, um, gotcha about the dictionaries though. Now if we look at this, dictionary is in a sense part of content, even though those are miscellaneous labels and um, they're not part of main content, but they're still part of the website content. So we'd really want content authors to have access to it. However, notice where it's located. It's located under the system node and that might be a problem because content authors should not in fact, should never have access to the system node. All right, so, well, Sitecore does provide a customization uh, that allows us to create site-specific dictionaries. It allows us to pull a dictionary out for a certain website and put it in a location of our choosing. For that, what we need to do is simply, let's assume that this is our website location. All we need to do is go insert 
when we're going to have to insert from template and I believe it's one of the system templates dictionary dictionary domain my dictionary okay so it's going to insert it with the default icon so it it's probably a good idea to give it this, you know, uh, the well-recognized red book icon here in Sitecore. And under that, you can go ahead and start inserting dictionary entries and dictionary folders as we just did under the system. And one more thing you would want to do under the web.config or in your patch file, hopefully you are using patch files to uh, create patches for your custom site definition. But for the purpose of the demo, what I'll do is I'll use customize the uh, oh, let's see customize the default config uh, we're in test website I believe this is 8.1 so what we want to look at is the sitecore.config and what we want to look for is the site definition again for the sake of the demo I'll use the default website node and here it is and what we want to do is add a dictionary domain property and pass it the ID of our dictionary domain item that we just created okay and there it is so now when we uh, use the call to the dictionary to translate a certain key to get the phrase, Sitecore will be looking under that dictionary domain instead of the default one. So there you go. That was uh, using dictionaries uh, with Sitecore. And again, my name is Vasily Fomichev and I'm a Sitecore technology MVP. If you like the video, go ahead and like it. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, Go ahead and put some comments below, perhaps with some ideas for future videos. And uh, if uh, uh, you'd like to find out more, please check out cmsbestpractices.com. And I will see you next Friday. Over and out.